What's up everyone? Welcome back to 2 Z Garage. From the title you guys can see we're going to be tackling Tina finally doing this disc brake conversion kit. In the last video that I tried doing this you guys seen, well if you didn't see, the center hub on the rotors were too small. So I had the machine over at Central Florida Machine and Speed. You can see here this was not as big as it is now. It was like so much smaller and it wasn't able to fit over the stock hub. This little guy right here. I still am missing some pieces to the puzzle. I still need to get all the new bearings and seals for the hubs and all that stuff. Once I take it out, I need to replace the seals and all that. In the kit, it's supposed to come with bolts, but my kit didn't come with those bolts, so I need to go and buy some. You see how thick that bracket is? That's probably about half an inch thick, so I need to get a bolt that's about a half an inch longer than the stock ones to compensate the difference of the brackets. I'll show you guys the whole kit again. My two brake lines here, very short. Set that to the side, and then inside these bags are my calipers. Those calipers are for a 1980s, 1990s around there. I forget the exact year. I'll put it up in the screen if I got it wrong, but it's for a Chevy pickup truck, and so are the rotors. Long story short, this kit is from a Chevy pickup and should be direct bolt on onto the Toyota pickup. Obviously, you have to get this bracket and modify some things to make it work, which is exactly what I'm going to show you guys in this video. Now, I was debating on going ahead to do the rear end as well and just drop the whole rear end so I can do the gear ratio, the differential gear. Like I said, I was gonna change that out, but I'm gonna hold back on that. I'm thinking I'm gonna do the brakes first. Once I get the brakes done, I enjoy the brakes for a little while, make sure everything's functioning properly, then I'll drop the whole rear end, change that gearing out and do all the other stuff that I wanna do to the rear end that's gonna make this thing look insane. I gotta take off the wheels. I already got the truck on jack stands and lift it up. Take out the wheels, take out the drums. I already showed you guys that in the last video. I'll probably throw a time lapse, but that's not too hard. I got my good old 12 volt brushless Dewalt half inch impact. It's not on a fully charged battery and it's only a two amp, but I'm just gonna see if it'll take these lug nuts off. Oh my God, I'm so impressed. This thing is freaking good. Imagine with that five amp battery. All right, relax, we got one more to do. You know something funny, I just got these wheels and I was on a marketplace the other night and I seen that they had a set of wheels, six by 139.7 for the Toyota pickup lug pattern. And they look just like the Volk Racing TE37s and I was like so tempted to get them and I was like, you know what, I can't. I just spent the money on these and I just don't have the money for the other ones, but imagine some TE37 looking wheels on Tina. I think that would look pretty crazy. And just like that, we are back. It's another beautiful day and we gotta tackle these brake drums and take them off. After we remove the drum, then we have these four bolts in the back. We got one, two, three, and the other one on top. If you guys remember last time I was trying to do this, I was having a very hard time doing the driver's side drum and I've been working on it for probably about an hour now. It's taken so long because it's been so stubborn and very hard to take off. But I finally got it off. So now I can work on removing those four bolts to pull this off. We got it off, take off those four bolts and then you can slide this whole shaft all the way out. Now we gotta press the back plate of the drum off of the hub. Before you take this to the press, you have this little snap ring. You can see right there, you have to take that off. Let's hope that something decides to bust now. Uh oh. I have been trying to do this for so long now. I tried everything, I tried torching it, pressing it. The press that I have is too small. It doesn't fit on the press. I actually bent the legs on the bottom. There is a special tool that they make that you can bolt onto the back of the hub, these four bolts. And then you, there's a plate, it's like a tube, it goes up. And with that tool, you, all you gotta do is press the shaft down and it just falls out. This is where I'm gonna have to end it for today. Tomorrow. Okay, so this, as you can hear, I'm exhausted. I got you guys on my iPhone so I can film you guys exactly what I did to take this off. Uh, I made this little structure to support the backing plate of the drum. 
I just screwed it down, that way the wood cannot move. The wood did end up cracking on the press. You can see it's all cracked up. So what I did is I heated it up with the big torch, got this piece, put it on top of my shaft so I don't damage it, and I hammer on this. I basically uh, use the sledgehammer. This takes a lot of force and a lot of heat, but uh, you keep hitting it, and eventually it'll come out. Now I'm going to use the press to press out all the bolts holding in the hub, and then I can separate it from the backing plate. Should be loose from the backing plate. You probably hammer this out. Give it a few taps and there it is. And now the backing plate is gone. We gotta push this bearing out of here. Of this piece, press it out. Before. I'm gonna clean it all up, get all that nasty grease off. Probably paint it black too. So, the reason why I use screws so I can take them back off so that I can put this right through here. Forgot to mention we need to remove this too to get it off the way from the back. That way we can lay the wood flat here and support it. Alright, so I already removed the C clip or the retaining clip so this good to come out. I'm not gonna even bother going to the press. I'm just gonna start hammering it down. I'll see what it does before I heat it up. And if it doesn't come out, I'll heat it up and do the same thing I did on the other side or with the other one. Right there, it's completely flat. Both sides, it's supporting the hub. So it's not tight, but it supports it. Brand new bearing, seals, everything. Paint should be dried up so we can press it back on, but got them black. They look sharp, way better than the red. This is my setup on pressing it back in. I'm just pressing it from the studs. I already got the seal on. Use the old bearing with that retaining clip and press it in there. All right, back at home, back on the camera. Hopefully the audio is way better. I laid everything out so I can show you guys what I have. Got the two brackets and I got all eight bolts that I needed. The hub and everything is already in bearing so they are good to go. The only thing that I need to change now is going to be the seals on the actual differential rear end. So I'll pull this off and this is what I need to change right here. So I gotta pull that out, put the new ones on and then I can basically start slapping everything back together. I'm just gonna get a screwdriver and pop it out. There you go. Pops out just like that. That's trash. And now we gotta get the other one. But before we put the other one on, wipe this down real quick. I don't think I showed off how good the black came out, but this black with the black wheels, it should look way better than the red did. Low key for me, it killed the look kind of before with the red in the center. But now there's gonna be black in the center. I think it's just gonna look way cleaner and it should make the truck look a lot nicer. So to put this new one on, obviously you gotta make sure it faces towards the inside. Get a hammer and just hammer it in. You want it to be flush, don't hit it in because it's not gonna seal properly. Before we slide the axle in, we're gonna loop this ring real quick, add some grease in there. Got some grease inside there, you can see. Got my shaft here, I put some in the end of the shaft and right here in the bottom. Don't be afraid to fill it up with grease. You can never put too much. So now this puppy's ready to go back on. There you go. So where the caliper sits is all personal preference. You can have it on either side, top or bottom. You just have to make sure that the nipple for the bleeder is facing up. I'm gonna put it towards the back. Me personally, I think that's gonna be the best place and look. You wanna make sure that the bracket goes like this in. 
and then the calories are gonna sit here. So I'm gonna torque these down. Hey, yo, what you think of how you like it? You like the way it looks? It looks cool, right? Yeah. I looked up the torque specs for those bolts and it says online to torque them down to 27 foot pounds. So we're gonna do just that. Torque all four of those bolts and then I'll mount the caliper, put the rotor and see how it looks. Let's hope it works. Okay. Well, it's on there. I'm gonna get a lug nut to hold it in place. Now we're ready for the caliper. So, I got my rotor here and I took it off as you can see. I've been doing a lot of research because I ran into a big problem. These bolts, the caliper bolts, they hit the rotor. I did some research and I measured the rotor and it turns out that this rotor is not to specifications. It is a little bit too big than what I need. I got the wrong rotor, so I'm not going to be able to complete this now. I did mount up the caliper. You can see how it looks. It looks great. It looks really good. It's definitely going to change the look of the truck, and so is the black center. I was in a debate whether I should keep it towards the back or should I move it towards the front. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't look bad. It matches the front, so what do you guys think? Should I move it or leave it right where it's at, towards the back? Honestly, I'm thinking that I'm going to just do what is best for the brake line. I don't want to bend the brake line so much and mess it up, so wherever the brake line lands best is where I'm going to put it, which looks like it's probably going to be towards the front, so I probably will end up moving it towards the front. If I bend it back, it's going to bend it too far back and I'm afraid it'll break this right here. I don't want to break the line, so if I bend it forward and down here, it's going to be probably the perfect spot if this was on this side. We have to also custom make something, that way I can have an e-brake. I guess. The time that the rotors come in, that'll give me time to get all the other stuff done. Hope you guys enjoy watching me do this upgrade on Tina. If you guys do, please be sure to let me know down below and let me know what you guys would like to see more of. If you have not already subscribed, please be sure to hit that subscribe button because I got way more content coming. Peace out and I hope to see you guys in the next video.